So if you've been following around, what we along what we have now um, is a, a Git a Git repository. If we do Git status, we can see there's there's nothing in there, and we have um, a notebook in there. Um, you have to be careful here because we've moved this notebook now, so we, we need to open and make sure that we're working with the, the version of the notebook that's in our Git repository here. Um, and if we, if we restart and run this now, remember what's going to happen now is that our, we're going to download this Fremont data set, put it in the Git repository, and um, if we do Git status now, we can see that there's this fremont.csv data in here. Now, data in a Git repository is kind of a, a difficult thing to work with because sometimes the data sets are so large that they can't be um, saved to GitHub. GitHub has a, a limit on the repository size. In this case, we'd probably be okay because this data is so small, but just as a, by way of example, I want to show you how I might deal with a data set that's larger than can fit in GitHub. Now, the first thing to do is we want to make sure we don't accidentally commit this data into the repository. So I'm going to open up this .gitignore file that we created when we, um, when we created the repository on GitHub. And what I'm going to do is at the bottom add uh, just a, a li list this data, fremont.csv, um, because that will say to git, if I do git status, I don't want that fremont.csv data there. And this the git ignore um, is now modified, so we can git add the git ignore and git commit um, uh, add data to git ignore. So now we have this. Now we have this in our in our file, and it's not going to save that Fremont data. Um, and of course, we can do git push origin master to make sure that we we uh, have that there. So um, the the other thing we can think about with data is every time we run this um, notebook, it's going to download this data, even if the data already exists on our computer. And with large data sets, that's probably not the thing that we want to do. So well, what we can do in that case is, um, is create a function that's going to only download this data if we need to download it, basically the first time it runs. So let's say uh, create a function called get Fremont data, and let's say the file name equals fremont.csv and the URL equals this big U URL right here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to check using the, the OS package, whoops, not right there, um, import OS. We can say if not os.path.exists uh, file name. Then what we're going to do is uh, URL retrieve that file, and we want to do um, URL comma file name, right? Um, just to clean things up, let's put this import up here, just so it's all self-contained. And um, otherwise, if if the path already exists, we're going to do nothing, and then we can um, read this data the way we've done bef down here. Uh, let's put this import up here again, just to to clean things up. And remember, we did some um, some modifications of the data as well. We changed the columns here, the column names of the data. So that, let's put that in there. And then we also down here added a total column. So let's let's put that in there as well. And then um, we should be able to return our data. And there's our function defined here. And now we can say data equals get Fremont data, and it should download the thing. Uh, another thing that's useful here just for, for testing purposes or if the data is updated, we can add something called force, force download equals false. And so we can say if we want to force the download or if the file name doesn't exist, then we'll retrieve it. So let's, let's do that. And we, we get the data. And now that we have all this stuff, we can, we can delete some of these things down here where we... Um, where we uh, did stuff earlier. This matplotlib in line here, this is kind of like an import statement. I'd rather put this at the top. And so what you're seeing now is I'm, I'm kind of taking this linear um, uh, interactive analysis that I've done and cleaning it up a little bit to make it, um, make it so that if the, the notebook itself makes a little bit more sense as a standalone document. So we've already done that. Uh, this is basically the same thing right here. Um, and then we have that 
net net. So let's uh, restart and run all just to make sure everything is working. And um, it'll take take a little bit to do this, but hopefully uh, hopefully we haven't done anything wrong. And then if we once we restart and run all, so it's it's downloading the data, it's it's converting the dates. Uh, we should get these. Oh, you know what? I can I can delete this plot because it's the same one as the one above. I forgot to do that. And now we have our, our pivoted version, and then we should have the results right there. So once that's done, um, the next thing that we want to do is, of course, go back here and say get status, and we can see what's going on with our notebook. I'm going to git add the Jupyter workflow and git commit minus m refactor data download. And push, yeah, we push it up there. And um, so now uh, this this new this new data download function that we've created is up on GitHub, and um, we have it saved, and we have a nice tool. So what we're going to do next is actually take this data download functionality and move it into a Python package. Um, and that way, we'll be able to import this data download um, into any notebook, not just the notebook we're using right here. So we'll take a look at that in the next video.